Okay everybody, this is the first official build video for my um, old Star Wars group build project um, put on by SMKR Scale Model Kit Review. Uh, as I mentioned in the intro video, it's going to be the Darth Vader TIE Fighter that I'm going to attempt to reconstruct. Now the problem with the, the, the TIE Fighter, uh, particular Darth Vader's TIE Fighter, uh, it only made one appearance in the in the series. I, I thought it was in Return of the Jedi. I thought I, I thought I remember seeing it in there, but uh, it's not, I guess. And uh, so, what what the, the the biggest problem with it all is is getting, of course, all the pieces apart. And I went ahead and scrubbed them all. That took no, not that long to do, but certainly showed all the glue. That's what happens with testers' glue over time. Is it does yellow. Um, not sure if Tamiya glue does that as well because I haven't been using Tamiya for very long. But what I'm going to do here is I'm trying to figure out how to build the walls. Now, again, this has been the really difficult part is finding out what the interior of a TIE fighter looks like because the real ones that they used for the for the movie um, they are very, very different. They're huge, basically. Um, I, and I'm pretty sure they did that for the shot, you know, so they could get the, the scene in there. But it looks like in the, in the original movies, for the TIE Fighters, um, they only had about this much was, was removed. So all of this was still, um, what was the backdrop. And then there's a very small kind of seat in there, and this was this was quite far back. This would have been like here, uh, as far as the wall goes, because this isn't a very big ship. It, it, it's quite small, and um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure they did that for the perspective of, of the shot. They probably figured out something with that. So then I began looking about what does it actually look like on the inside, because um, there's all these little triangles everywhere, and I found out that in the movie what they did is they had kind of a curved room here, but then they put those triangles on, and it, it, it gives it this angular pattern, which is really cool, but it's not actually what it is. It, it's round. And so then when you go like look at the fine molds kit, it's got this kind of really nice uh, evenly shaped pattern around it, and that's, it's not actually technically accurate to what it was in the show. So that's what I'm forced with doing here, is what do I want to base it on? What do I really want to do? And I tried finding pictures of the studio model, and it kind of looks like all they did for the studio scale models. I couldn't find good pictures of Darth Vader's TIE Fighter. I was able to find an actual TIE Fighter, because again, I'm pretty sure they just used the same interior. I don't think they did anything different. But um, they've all got these kind of, I don't know, what do you want to call it, but kind of a bridge here. And this goes in the front. And um, <clears throat> it, it's kind of hard to see all around that. And it's, it's just, where do, you, where do you go? That's been my big difficulty. So this is there. This isn't really there, um, but I like it a lot, so I'm going to keep this. Even though, look what I did there. Just broke that piece off, so I'm going to have to restore that. So, I've been trying to figure out how to make a shape to fit in here. And so I went online and I, I like made this, found this little model. I remember doing these when I was a kid in school. And uh, being one of the only people who could do them. Because I built so many models. Um, this doesn't quite fit. So then I started just coming up with the shapes. And I had this idea for this H out of out of squares here and it, it would look like this so if I cut out these perfect shaped squares and glued them in like this I could fill in the bottoms there by just placing styrene on top and cutting around it this one didn't work the H shape didn't work but the cross did work so I've made this cross in here and it should fit pretty well in there and it'll give me enough room that if I need to, I can cut it off little sections and help it fit in a little bit better. Um, but the other good thing about it is it's really cool. Uh, I can do like what they did in the show and just cut out all these little triangles and then glue them on when I'm ready to go. So, 
I'm going to go ahead and try building this. This is just kind of an update as to what I'm doing. Um, it's going to take me a while to do it, but it's going to be worth it in the end. I don't know if I'm going to keep all this detail in here. I might have to shave some of it down to get a little bit better of a fit, but uh, it should be good. But it, it's a big problem of going about what is the what is in the in the real ones versus what did they use and finding a balance between the two i've i've yet to actually see anything lucasfilm produced or published that says this is what the interior looks like um so i don't have to worry about it too much i can go have some fun and i'm going to kind of base it off of the two and base it off my own design so i'm going to go ahead and cut out all these little squares here and get going so this is gonna be fun okay everybody this is gonna be really hard for me to explain oops yeah thought I'd do something silly like that um, so I've, I've been doing a lot of work as you can see I actually got it kind of around there but uh, the hard part now for me is to actually explain what I what I did here um, because I'm not very good at math and so I'm actually very very bad at math to say I'm not good at math is is, is uh, kind of a lie I think my teachers in school used to just basically give me passing grades it's just one of the things I do not understand so figuring out all these angles and 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 you know, dimensions and stuff is, is quite hard for me to do. But I I, I think because I was applying it, it was a bit easier for me to to get my head around. So this is what it looks like right now, and as you just saw, it fits quite nicely in here. So first thing I needed to do is I put this board in the bottom, and I put this on top here like so and I'm gonna try and explain this but I did and it, it, this was very complicated I couldn't film it but I did take pictures so um, for whatever I'm talking about uh, hopefully I took a correct picture for that and I can I can display that instead so first thing I did I put all this together I put this on top and I needed to measure the height so I put my stirring stick in here like so and gave it a rough estimate about right there comes to about 50, where am I here? About 53 uh, millimeters there. So that's the height I have that I can work with. Next step was to glue on the backboard here. And like I said, I wanted to keep this cross shape, which I did. I was able to do that. Glued this down at a nice 90 degree angle. So that's on there like that. And then what I did is I took the two pieces of styrene and I glued them together like so. And I put them at uh, my compass here and measured up the angle so it's at a 40 degree angle. I figured out that's what I need. I, I just kind of put this down. It was kind of, for the most part it was, it was guessing, figuring out the precise fit. And then I found out 40 degree angle is about what I need. Uh, glued it onto the side here and used these longer ones, where's my pointer, here we are, to connect it from here to here. So this was the first thing that I had built with these angles on here. And I'm not worried about them overlapping on the outside because you're not going to see them overlapping on the inside. They're just going to look nice and flush. So there's the bonus there. Um, so what, what my next step is here uh, was to temporarily affix this. I used some plasticine here, uh, pushed the front up there, uh, again 90 degree angle, and all I did once these two were dry is to super glue this one to, to this piece right here. So this isn't attached yet. I left this off so I can pull it off, I can spray paint, I can detail everything on the inside this will be like the last thing that I put on but 
it's uh, it, everything's at the correct angle that it needs to be. That's what my big concern was when I was doing this. So now what I can do, and this is what I've done, I don't know where I put it here. I took one of these squares and oh, I can't even grab the darn thing. I took one of these squares and this is what I'm going to do to fill in the, the back here is I just put it in like this and so right like that and here I have a rough estimate of what I need so hopefully if I flip this around this might be the same angle that I need for the other side. It looks like it's going to be a little bit more of an increase in there but that's an easy thing for me that I can fix later on. So you just saw me gluing these two pieces on here because what I'm going to do is and this is going to be very difficult for me to do but uh, very fun challenge nonetheless. I'm going to take these here and these are going to act as braces and these are going to be glued in here like this. So then what I'm going to do and this part I haven't quite figured out yet. I've got an idea in mind. Uh, I think I know what I'm going to do. So I'm going to glue that down in there. Kind of a temporary solution. And I think what I'm going to do is put a little bit of tape at the top of it here. So when I put this down on the top like that, I don't know if I can show this. Kind of. Oh, I know how I can show it. So you can see it'll sit in the back here, right? But it's going to lean up against the top. It'll sit at about right here. So, and it just needs it just needs to sit there uh, until the glue is dried, because then if I get that one at the top, at the if I get these two at the top at the correct angles, I can then measure what these two need to be, and kind of the same thing around the bottom is to adjust and make those. So, that is what I have been doing. Um, I hope that made sense. It certainly does to me, but that's maybe not a good thing. Alright, super cool right now. Check this out. Guys, I have built it. It doesn't look as nice on the outside, but on the inside it's actually pretty cool. Uh, I've got these nice angles in here, and... Uh, I don't think you're going to notice any like, little you know, slip-ups that I had going along the way. So I did exactly what I mentioned before by kind of taping the one out to the top and then just gluing these other two around there. And I'm quite happy with this, so check this out. This is, this is really cool. So I'm going to put this just here. So I was a little worried about these edges in here because you can see inside here but when you put this piece on the front like so hold on let me just do this without hopefully making things worse oops no 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 stay there okay have to do this all as carefully as I can check it out so yeah you can't see you can't really see in there unless you're absolutely kind of looking for it so look at that I'm really happy with that I'm not too worried about this on the top here uh, mainly because once uh, where is it? Come here. Uh, once this piece goes on you your view is really kind of sheltered from seeing inside of there so like I said, not worried about that on the top, but I'm really excited about this. So this is still drying, so I'm going to put this away here. So my next item to build, I think, is, I think I'm going to do the chair. I'm going to go sketch some designs. Uh, I'm just going to make up some kind of, you know, basic functioning looking chair, kind of designing it around a couple uh, pieces that I found on the internet but uh, yeah I'm gonna start scratch building that drop some designs of how I want it to look like and after that's done I'm gonna start working on the uh, controls here so there's kind of these uh, I'm, I'm not sure exactly what was here it looks like something was actually this is probably nothing but it looks like something was right here 
uh, where it's painted blue, but these could be some screens. Uh, I could put something on here. Could make that into a screen. Something to give it just a little bit more light and life to it. So pretty cool. Uh, I'm pretty excited about this. And then, like I said, later on, what I'm going to do is make all the little um, triangle panels to go on there. And we're going to get to that later on, but I'm pretty excited about this. This is really cool. So I'm going to leave that up there to dry and get to work on a seat now. So I'll be back when I get that started or completed. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> okay, well, you guys, I have built the chair and it was a lot of just basically scratch building. So I'm going to toss up some pictures here. Uh, I did some little concept designs of what I wanted it to look like and that led into measuring out how big it was going to be, cutting out the templates and yeah, kind of kind of measuring how tall I think it should be. Uh, it seems like the pilot sit, like it's kind of high and so the pilot sit kind of low in these things so I kind of kept it with that in mind but yeah, here it is. Here's the little here's my little chair and it's just again made out of some styrene there's nothing really special about it and uh, so basically what I found out is the TIE fighter seats are, are there they're very simple um, some have armrests I didn't want to have armrests it didn't feel like it would um, and it's just got this short little headrest on here and just kind of a little bit of a design I could paint this up a different color later on maybe do a little panel lining in there um, and then when I was digging around in my spares box, I found these, and I think what I'm going to do is put this in the front, like that. Oops, sorry. So it'll sit like that, just to give it a little bit of something different to look at. So, again, th the chair was a really simple design of just mashing up some styrene, but I am very, very happy with the end result. I think it looks quite nice when you see it in the cockpit there, and... Um, what I was worried about um, was that the chair would obscure the, this design in the back. Because again, I quite like that design. Um, but uh, there. So that's pretty cool. So my next step right now is to build the control column. And I've got a bunch of spare pieces out here. And so I'm going to get to that later after it's built. Cause Describing it is going to take me quite a while to do, um, rather than if I just put it up and, and, and build it and then explain afterwards. But um, yeah, it should look pretty cool. It's going to sit on that little that little uh, rectangle right there. So <clears throat> it's all coming together, and I'm having quite a bit of fun still, which is a good thing. Haven't got frustrated with the model yet. Uh, I am worried about doing these pieces in here inside the wings. Um, they are going to be a little bit of a challenge because that does need to be a, a precise fit because you can look inside of those. But I'll worry about that when I get there. For now, I'm going to go build that control column and I've got some spare pieces that I, I dug out of the box just a little while ago. Some of these I'm going to use um, just in areas around the the cockpit and stuff. So I'll figure all that out. And for now, I'm just going to go at it and uh, start start building the control stick. Okay, I finished making the control column and all that stuff here. Um, the control column was actually the most challenging piece because if I based it off of the 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 movie, the actual prop, it's it's a little bit different. I kind of like this idea that it's it's a double control stick, but it moves around on its own. Um, so my designs here, I was coming up with you know some way to to move it, and it's kind of on a box and it's got these arms that come out but this is what it looks like from the side and getting all that to work that was kind of a challenge but then it started to become really fun so as the pictures will show um, this this is what I uh, in the end came up with I'm actually really happy about this little design here so you can see it's got this bit of an arm that sticks out from 
the the console here and then I used uh, a BB a little plastic BB and I took my saw and I just cut it cut into the side of it and then I cut it at a, a higher angle so that it I can have it up a little higher um, and then I raided my spare parts box and uh, this is actually pretty cool so for the box what I used is um, it's the doors that are closed for the uh, Airfix Draken, the one that I just finished. Um, I used the ones open there. And these arms here, I'm I'm not sure, uh, actually I should, shouldn't get too ahead of myself here, sorry. Uh, I just covered it up with styrene on the sides and the front there. The arms, I'm not exactly sure what they were. They look like little um, antenna from something. I just don't know what kit they came off of but uh, I drilled some holes in the bottom uh, I was able to angle them so I was able to get that nice angle that I that I was wanting to begin with and uh, for the screen on the front it's actually from the Panzer Kampfwagen 2 from Tamiya it's 35th scale spare part and there was a there was a bump in the middle and I just scratched it off and left two little knobs on the bottom uh, and then to make the handles they are the little arms that would go around or underneath a drop tank or a bomb. Again, I don't know what they're from, but I just kind of cut the one side off. And to me, I think they look like pretty nice little little arms there. And then the two buttons on top, they were just some extra sprue from those arms. And since they were just these perfect little circles, I went, oh, heck, I'm just going to glue those on there. And then the last thing I did is added on this guitar string into the top just to give it a little bit more character on there so um, yeah then I, I went ahead and drilled a, like I said I, I or sorry not drilled sawed off another line there into the top of the BB and just made this other little arm that connects everything together so kinda what's cool about the BB is it's kinda like you know you're saying how can it turn and stuff well it's on a ball hinge so it can kinda rotate any way that it wants and right now it looks kind of funny because it's this green color and I've got all these different pieces of plastic but later on once I get it painted and assembled properly it'll look really nice uh, and then I raided my spare parts or spare decal box and I found this um, this is a, a, a decal from the Battlestar Galactica Viper and it's just the screen for the front it's got a little Cylon Raider in it but you can barely see it I'm just gonna cut out that make it smaller and that's going to go on. Oops, that's going to go on the front of the display here. So uh, I think the next step, I'm going to go look in the bits box here, and I'm going to try and find two more little screens that I can put on here on either side. Um, doesn't need to be there, but I'd really like them to be there. What I want them to do is I want them to be at an angle, so the pilot's looking down and he's not looking down at a flat surface that they're kind of angled up like this so you can see him a little bit better and I've got some decals in mind or something for that I'll kind of figure that out when I when I get there but that's that's what I've done so far so um, this took me about a day to get it all done and it took me about an evening to get done the chair um, I'm surprised I was able to actually work as fast as I am with this with this project. I've just been kind of having fun and going at it. So here's what it looks like, you know, sitting in there. I'm really happy with this. And then once the chair's in there, it it uh, it all comes together. So this is pretty cool. And I've also got some other spare pieces here that I can throw around inside the cockpit or for whatever I want to use them uh, or wherever. And um, so yeah, that's about it for me. I'm going to go and find those other little computer screens to mock up over there for the sides. But uh, I'm, I'm getting close to actually being ready to paint this thing, which is pretty cool. So that's my progress so far. Alright everybody, um, this is just kind of getting close to ready to paint everything, so I'm pretty excited. just want to show you guys... Um, I was able to find the uh, screens here for the uh, this was the last thing I did last night I, I sliced my thumb open there and so I was I was kind of thought maybe that's a subtle hint to quit building but I, I did make these little displays there and these are mirrors from a 35th scale Sherman 
from the group build, they go into like all the hatches, the little mirrors there, and all I did is I cut them off on the on the bottom, and when I, once I start airbrushing and painting over them, you're you know they're not going to be clear, and I'll just put some nice little decals on there, and, and basically they're exactly what I wanted them to you know be like. So I'm pretty excited about that because it looks pretty cool. So I was able to get those done. So that's that piece is done. It's done done until I start you know decaling. Um, and then I also went ahead and added in just some dumb little pieces that I could find that I liked, and there's even some in the hatch here. And so once you put that on top, and this is just, you know, when you look inside of the kit, you can just see some things in there. Uh, it's not just, because the walls only come up to where the where the marker is there. So it's just, again, it's just filler, basically. Doesn't mean anything, it's not going to be anything spectacular. But, you know, you just paint it up in a different color and, and it looks, you know, okay. Um, the other thing that I found that was really kind of fun... Uh, was the laser emitters um, so this is this is how I built them and uh, I, I did build them kind of ahead of myself because they look really cool so this these these won't really register as well on the camera because they are very very tiny um, but what they are is I don't I don't know what the gray part is uh, I believe that's from the Tamiya tiger tank that I did I don't know what they would be from though I think they might be from the wheels or something. I don't have the instructions anymore. But um, they just had a great looking shape to them. You can see they kind of get a little bit smaller as they go out there. And then the light gray part is the spinner from the uh, uh, Minicraft. Uh, is it Minicraft? Yeah, it is Minicraft. Minicraft models, sorry. The Minicraft models 1144th scale B17G that I did a little while ago. Um, these are the spinners that you get. You get them either propellers or these ones that make it look like it's flying. And so, of course, I, I use the propellers. But it looks pretty awesome. And all I have to do is just paint that little bit orange there or, or green. And, uh, yeah, I got two of those. And so those are going to go on the, the front right here. So, they're not accurate, but I, I like them a lot, so I'm going to keep them. I'm not even going to worry about accuracy on, on that front. So, um, kind of the next thing that I'm about to do here is I'm going to start cutting out some more styrene into little triangles. And I'm going to make all those little um, computer consoles that go on the inside of the walls. So, that's that's my next step. I think I'm just going to use this, you know, this shape here of styrene and just make a triangle. And so my next step is going to be airbrushing. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm ready to just airbrush the entire cockpit and stuff like that. And I'll get into what paints I'm going to use later. But uh, yeah, I'm going to start doing those. And then I'll be able to, once they're done, I'll be able to install them. So that's that's where I'm going at with this right now. It's a lot of work, but it's it's really, really fun. Um, so I this is something I have to mention is is a huge thank you to everybody who has been really awesome in volunteering to send me parts for this kit or even the whole kit uh, it's been it's been really awesome from you guys so I, I just gotta say a big huge thank you to everybody who has volunteered to do that it is really well appreciated but I'm actually doing okay for right now um, and the problem with this is is I, I edited the video last Sunday, uh, or sorry, I made the video on Sunday, but I didn't get to upload it until uh, I think Wednesday is when I uploaded it. And so I uploaded it Wednesday, so I think it came up on Thursday. It would have been, I, I have to check it out. But anyways, what ends up happening is, is during those days before, I was actually working on the cockpit section here. And th this took me a longer time to do because I had to let it dry and I, I made it sure everything was precise and I, I kind of just layered glue and super glue on top of here to make it really work so by the time I was answering everybody's questions and comments and stuff uh, I was kind of finishing off this a few days later I became very busy so this past Sunday I actually built the uh, built the chair here and um, then on, on Monday which is yesterday it was a uh, 
uh, Canadian holiday, I basically just sat at the desk all day and built this little thing here in between the glue drying. So, I, I actually did a lot more work, you know, here on just these two pieces in, in two days than I did on, on this bigger one because I was, like I said, I was busy doing other things. So, that's kind of the problem with my with my videos. That's why I don't usually do this. I kind of upload it all at once. Is is um, so that this kind of, kind of confusion doesn't happen. It's not a bad thing or anything like that. But it's just where I'm at to where I actually am by the time I, I upload the video. I could be, you know, I I could have it starting the kit. But by the time you see the video, I could be just putting the final touches on it. And then I get all these comments and suggestions, and I'm kind of like, uh, you know, that that section is coming eventually where I will answer all those questions. So it, it's a bit of a, a thing, to, it's a bit of a rough process, but I'm doing it this way because I do have a couple other projects coming in. And as soon as they come in, they take priority over this one. And this one has to go on the side for a little while until those other two are done, which is unfortunate, but it's it's the way it has to be. So... Um, yeah, like I said, it is Tuesday. I'm going to go and start airbrushing or start cutting out these little um, computers, but I am going to upload, uh, edit and upload this video, hopefully for you guys very soon. And um, yeah, and I, I'm just going to keep updating you guys as I go along. And yeah, it's coming along pretty well, so I'm pretty darn excited. And uh, that's about it. I got a lot more work to do. I'm always noticing little things that I have to clean up and and adjust on this stupid thing here. But <laughs> it's, it's like like I, I notice these are broken so I have to make them straight again. Look at that. Oh yeah yeah. And then I, I have to detail the back which is gonna be fun. I'm actually looking forward to that. That's what these um, these pieces are here for. They're kinda I think they're gonna go in the back. But uh, yeah, it is coming along, and the other thing I'm uh, I'm trying to decide is um, I got to find the parts. I think I'm going to build a display stand for it, but not use this little you know nub there. It'll be on a on a pole type of thing. So, anyways, like I said, that's all me figuring it out as I go along. But uh, thanks again, everybody who volunteered uh, offered to send me parts. You guys are really awesome. Uh, I, I really mean that. So, anyways, I'm gonna go start cutting these out, and um, yeah, I'm I'm excited. Let's get airbrushing.